Good morning, my friends, and welcome to Douglasville First United Methodist Church. I am Senior Pastor Roger Vest, and today we're going to be reading from Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. Hear now the word of the Lord. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to win the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. So we get this letter from uh, the Apostle Paul, and we look at him, and we know Paul to be a, a missionary, he's a pastor, he's an evangelist, he's a theologian, he's so many things to so many people. But today's passage, he sounds like your high school coach. He's uh, on the sideline, he, he, you're at practice, and he's like, all right, you got to run. You got to make sure you're doing the right things at the right time in order to win the race. You've got to run like you want to win. And it, it makes a lot of sense, and we like to have that motivational speech. We like to have that motivation there. But today we want to look at what does it mean uh, to win the race? What is our goal? What is, what is the race that we're on? as we talk about that. And this continues our series of messages called On the Run, dealing with a running and a race metaphor found in scripture throughout. And it talks about our journey, our Christian journey, our spiritual walk, whatever you wanna call it. Um, our day-to-day -day life as we have, as we respond to the gift of salvation that we have received from Jesus Christ. And so uh, that is the gift that we have been given. And so our life and how we live it is our gift in return to Christ. What do we do? How do we do it? How do we prepare? Um, that All those questions uh, fit in with what we're talking about today. And so we look at the goal that is set before us. You know, you run to win the goal. You run to win the prize. What is that prize? What does it look like? Um, it is not, uh, our goal is not to work for our salvation because Christ has already accomplished that. Um, there's nothing we can do, nothing we can say. We can't pay for it. We can't earn it. It is given as a gift. And so what we are looking at, uh, the goal that is, is living a life of gratitude, um, living a life you know, when you've been given a second chance, think about that. You've been given an opportunity that you didn't earn, maybe uh, your first job or somebody said something to somebody and they let you in based upon their recommendation and it was total grace. And you, you were there maybe in a position that you didn't feel qualified for, but you were there anyhow. And so you respond to that gratitude by living your life the best that you can. You're motivated to do the best that you can to prove, in a sense, uh, that you uh, belong there, that you in enjoy that. And so to be faithful and obedient to God's call in our lives um, and to live a life of gratitude for all that he has given us, that is our goal. That is our motivation. That is what our run is, what our journey is, what our race is. And the reality is not everyone is going to complete the race. Not everyone is going to make it all the way to the end. Um, we're not saying that God's gift is uh, invalid. It isn't. Uh, God's gift is permanent. It is given to each of us. But what we do with that gift, um, there will be some people who will complete the race. Um, and uh, they will hear the phrase from God, well done, good and faithful servant. But there are people who will run and who will wander away. Um, they will have received the grace and then for whatever reason will have let it lapse, let it, uh, will throw it away, will not do what they're called to do. So we need to be aware of what is our goal in the Christian journey. 
And really, and the next thing is we need to understand the, the worth of that goal. You know, um, think of it this way. Consider uh, there's a race, a 100-meter dash, all right? And the prize is $100, all right? You know, I, I, I could do, use $100. You know, I think you could too. Um, and so there's a certain motivation there. But what if right before the race, uh, the official comes and says, no, the prize is not $100, rather it's $10,000. Um, your motivation suddenly changes, doesn't it? Um, you know, maybe your adrenaline starts pumping. You start thinking about, okay, what can I do to get out of, out of the blocks quicker? What can I do to better to give me a better chance of winning this race because all of a sudden the goal is worth so much more than it was before. And what if you knew about the increased prize months before? You know, would you prepare for a hundred dollar race different than a ten thousand or a hundred thousand or a million dollar race? I think most people would. You're like the prize is worth every ounce of effort I can put into it. This prize is worth all the training and all the uh, everything that I can put into it. The prize is worth that. And so we need to recognize the worth of our goal, the worth of our prize, and that is Jesus Christ. We are running for that race. We are running to for his approval. We are running uh, in response to what he has done for us. We are running a life of thanksgiving, a life of gratitude, a life of obedience. For you see, the worth of the life well lived for Christ is, you know, we get blessings beyond count. Um, and that, re that is regardless of what we do. We receive blessings upon blessings every single day of our life. We have a satisfaction in knowing that we have lived out our giftedness. Um, we all know uh, I believe that God has called each one of us, has gifted each one of us with certain things, certain skills, certain gifts, spiritual gifts, whatever you want to call it. And he has gifted that to us. And our response to him is to use those gifts to glorify God and to build up the kingdom of God here on earth. And so when you are working in your area of giftedness, my friends, there's nothing like it. Um, it's like um, being married to a teacher. Um, it's, it's kind of funny sometimes. You'll, you'll see the high school teachers looking at the elementary school teachers and thinking, how in the world can you do that? And then the middle school teachers, they're looking both ways, wondering what in the world is going on. You know, I'm married to a middle school teacher. I understand. And so everybody looks at the other and says, you know, how can you deal with that type of student? Well, they're called to that kind of student. They're called, they're gifted. And so for them, for those who are high school teachers, oftentimes, you know, you don't want them to teach elementary school students. And you don't want the elementary te teachers working with the high schools. You want people who are called, who are gifted. And uh, you want people who are called and gifted to sing in the choir. You want people who are called and gifted uh, to serve in certain areas. So think about that. There's something about working in your area of giftedness. And then you think about the impact that your race can have on others. Um, if you are running your best race, um, it will impact your family. It will impact the people around you, your family, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers. Um, you don't know what kind of impact your life will have. Um, but we know that we have that possibility, and so we strive. We do the very best that we can in order to win the race. And so keeping that worth, knowing the worth, affects our preparation. Uh, knowing the worth of the race, it affects our motivation. It affects our sense of urgency. Um, when you know the race is important, um, you prepare differently. When you know that today might be the day um, someone sees Jesus in me, today might be the day that uh, I can uh, be Christ for someone else. Today might be the day where I can pass on the grace that I have received to someone else who is desperately in need of that. 
Preparation requires discipline. Uh, every action impacts the race. Think about that. Uh, particularly, you think about a, a, a sprint. You know, you've got to have a great start. And so you've got to uh, get down in the blocks a certain way. You've got to know how you're going to start. You've got to be able to run through the race and then finish well. Every step along the race has an important part of completing the race. And so how we wake up, what do we do to prepare? How we live our lives? What do we deal with anxiety and worry? How do we deal with anger and bitterness? How we deal with people that don't like us or people we don't like? All of these things come into play and we, it affects how we win our race, how we run our race. There's a willingness also, knowing the worth, um, there's a willingness to surrender lesser goals in order to attend to attain the higher goal. Um, if your goal is to win the race, you know, there will be times when, oh, I just need a little break. Um, and, and, you know, there, there will be breaks in between the race, and you need to have that rest. You need to recharge and renew. But there are times when we're just lazy, you know, when we're like, oh, it, it doesn't matter today. I'm going to let my guard down. I'm not going to do what I need to do. You know, um, I, I just want to feel good. I want. I, I need this. This. This will help me. You know, and the focus becomes us rather than the race. And if we are willing to say, I'm going to let that satisfaction, that happiness, that um, good feeling aside. I'm going to set that aside because I really want to win this race, the race of living my life for Christ, the, lay, the race of this journey, the spiritual journey that I'm on. I want to do well in this race. And so I'm willing to set aside some of these other goals, some of these other prizes, so that I can win the ultimate prize. And so the final question is, are you ready for your race? And, and here's the thing, a lot of us will say, no, I'm not. And, and there's a, a sense of honesty there. Um, you know, I look at my race, I look at my walk, I look at my day-to-day -day preparation. There are times when I'm like, I'm not ready for this. I'm not prepared. I'm not worthy. Well, my friends, Christ is the one that makes us worthy. The Holy Spirit comes and dwells within us and gives us his wisdom and his strength. And so part of the answer is just to start, to begin, to go. And then as you are running your race... You are preparing, you're learning new te uh, techniques, you're learning new disciplines, you're learning how to run the race better the next day. Um, you wonder sometimes um, why people continue to study the scripture all their lives. You ever wondered that? You ever seen someone who has been a, a person of faith for 50, 60, 70 years and they still uh, dive in. They've read the Bible dozens of times. They've studied it. They've gone to all sorts of Sunday school classes, all sorts of Bible studies, and yet they still have this love of the Scripture. Why? Because God still teaches us in His Word, and God still reveals that Himself to us in His Word. And until we are with Him, we, we do not know it all. And so every chance we get to learn more about Christ every chance we get to discipline ourselves, to prepare ourselves for the race, will end in that much, will make us that much better. We will draw closer to God, and we will draw closer to winning the race that has been set before us. So are you ready for your race? Are you running to win? Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, for leading us and guiding us. Thank you for allowing us to run the race, to run with you, to uh, run towards you. Father, give us the strength and the wisdom and the courage we need to run our race with faithfulness and obedience. Bless us, Father, as we go forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.